Alrighty, everybody, and welcome back <clears throat> to another one of Ronan's movie reviews for today. We're going to be mo reviewing Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which is one of my favorite movies ever created. Not just because Spider-Man's my favorite superhero, but because this might genuinely be one, not only one of the best movies ever created, but one of the best animated films ever created. Now, with all that being said... Let's go ahead and get into the review. Um, Spider-Man is the Spider-Verse is classified as an animation, action, adventure, comedy, family, fantasy, sci-fi film. Um, the synopsis of this film is bitten by a radioactive spider in the subway. Brooklyn teenager Miles Morales suddenly develops mysterious powers that transform him into the one and only Spider-Man. When he meets Peter Parker... He soon realizes that there are many others who share his special high-flying talents. Miles must now use his newfound skills to battle the evil Kingpin, a hulking madman who can open portals to other universes and pull different versions of Spider-Man into our world. Um, the cast, which I'm like, I'm probably going to butcher a bunch of these names, so again, like last time... Feel free to bully me in the comments about not being able to pronounce some of these names. Um, the cast is Shamik Moore, Jake Johnson, Haley Steinfeld, Stan Lee, Oscar Isaac, Chris Miller, Nicolas Cage, Maharshal Ali, Chris Pine, John Mulaney, excuse me, Zoe Kravitz, Brian Tyree Henry, Liev Schreiber, Lily Tomlin, Kimiko Glenn, Katherine Hahn, Joaquin Casio, Post Malone, who had one line of dialogue in the entire movie. Um, Miguel Geron, Luna Lauren Velez, Crondon, Jorma Tacone, Lake Bell, Greta Lee, Natalie Morales, Nick Jane, Carlos Zaragoza, um, Joseph Izzo, Mimi Davilia, the villa, not Davilia, it's the villa. Um, Claudia Chu, Kim Yarbrough, Melanie Haynes, Edwin H. Bravo, Adam Brown, Dennis Singletary, Michelle Jubilee Gonzalez, Ruth Zalduando, Zalduando, Juan Carlos Arvello. Oscar Camacho, Juan Pacheco, Pacheco, one of those, Harrison Knight, Scott Menville, Terrence Hardy Jr., Oliver Garud, Cliff Robertson, and Camilla Jordana. Um, and the places you can find this film are Fubo TV, Hulu, Sling TV. Uh, Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, Vudu, Google Mo Google Play Movies and TV, Apple TV, FX Now, and YouTube TV. Now, with that being said, let's get into the stuff I liked and didn't like about the film. And this is probably where my bias is going to start showing. Um, things I liked. I loved the animation. The animation was so well done. And this film was such a huge leap for animated films going forward in the future. Um, it was just good. It was nice, clean, crisp. And they were able to mix a few animation styles together. Especially with the spider people. And I'll get more into that in a little bit. Uh, the story was amazing. The story was so well paced. So well done. Uh, the characters were so great. It just, it worked. Um... The story had a nice resolution and left the window open for a sequel. Which I'm like, that is what you should be doing with your movie. That's how it works. That's how a film works. That's how you make the perfect film. Uh, the spider people, all of them were so well done. You had Miles, who, you know, was learning how to grasp his spider powers because he was just freshly, freshly bit. You had Peter, who died for... Uh, so Miles is Peter, that who just died for plot. That that's that's what he was there for. That's what it felt like. Uh, Peter B. Parker, who was a fucking asshole, who later became like this mentor figure for Miles. You had Gwen, 
who is like similar to Miles in age, who is just there to be like, hey, you know, um, I don't really know how to explain when. Cause like, she was kind, of, she was like a love interest for Miles, and she was like, I I don't know. I she was also a mentor figure for Miles. That is the best way to describe her. Um, you had Penny, who was done in like this manga anime style, and like who had like a mech suit. Uh, you had Spider Man Noir, who was done in black and white. And you had Spider-Ham, who was just a fucking Looney Tunes-esque cartoon. Uh, the villains were also great. Kingpin was just a, such a well-done villain, and he actually had actual motives that actually made sense to the plot. Uh, spoiler alert, so if you don't want spoils, I'll give you guys a countdown from 5 to click off this video. Alright, so 5, 4, 3, 2... One, he was trying to use this um, machine called the Collider to kind of like bring his, uh, bring a version of his wife and child to this universe. Um, because the his wife and child in this universe is dead. And without going any further into like spoilers, that's why he's doing what he's doing. And that's where the spider people come into play at. Because they were brought in from these other universes because of this machine called the Collider. The character interactions were great. All of the characters worked well together. Their chemistry was great. And you can also give that up to the voice actors. Because the voice actors did an amazing job interacting with each other. And I'm not sure how the filming process went. But it was just very, very very well done. Um, they did a gr they did an amazing job. The soundtrack, every song that was in this movie was an absolute fucking banger. You had Juice World, X, Lil Wayne. Who else was there? Jaden Smith. Um, and uh, countless others who lent lent their voices. Uh, to be on the soundtrack and put on this song. Not to mention there were songs by like Biggie and a few others that were just in here. And it just, it was it was good. Also, Post Malone and Sway Lee, Sunflower, amazing. Uh, the character design was also amazing. Miles is everything from the Spider-Man costume that Miles bought, Miles bought and was wearing to the suit he made in the end to the uh, Peter suit, Gwen suit, Spider-Ham's design, the villain's design, Kingpin being this big hulking figure who takes up the entire screen was just so well done. It don't even get me started on the Prowler's design. Um, another thing that I liked is uh, it shows how stressful school life can be on a teen. Um, Miles is struggling with going to a new school, and it shows the pressures of that while also dealing with, like, uh, trying to fit in, which Miles is struggling to do, and I'm sure that's something that we can all relate to. Um, another, uh, Speech Bubbles. Speech Bubbles started, ap started appearing after, like, uh, Miles got his powers. Um, an example is, like, after his hand gets stuck to Gwen's hair, and, you know, the nurse has to, like, cut it off. He goes back in the hallway. Everybody's looking at him. He's like, why is everybody looking at me? Why is, it, why is my voice so loud? And then the speech bubbles behind him are appearing and, like, saying that. And that's just a cute little thing I enjoyed. Um, there was this thing that they did where every time a spider person would introduce themselves, they would uh, throw a comic on, like, this... Uh, I'm going to say it's a table, but really it was just a black screen. And it would be, um, uh, it would be like a comic with their picture on it and their name. And it would flip open and it would start telling like their origin story and how they got to this universe. Um, I love the scene where Miles starts like realizing that he has, uh, has superpowers and he's like on the roof. Well, not on the roof, on like the wall outside where it's high up. It's a school building and he's freaking out and he's like, let go, let go, let go. And then he's like, no, keep sticking, keep sticking, keep sticking. Because he's realizing that, you know, 
he has powers and he doesn't know how to use them and the entire film he's trying to figure out how to use these powers um i already went into kingpin's motive uh there was a message in the film where it was like anybody can wear the mask and i think that is just such a uh, such an inspirational thing because not only he, does it talk about the other spider people who were there like hey you know these are also spider people and they're so diverse and different it also shows that like me or you could be like wearing the mask theoretically anybody could be spider-man that's like the message that it's conveying anyone can be spider-man or spider-woman spider-person uh, I already went into Peter B. Parker's character development, but I'll get more into that now. Uh, he was an absolute asshole to Miles in the beginning. He just wanted to get home. He didn't care about Miles' universe. He's just like, hey, I just, I want to get home. I don't want to be here. And he started leaning into, like, being a mentor for Miles. And, he, you know, he's like, hey, I don't want kids. Kids scare me. And Miles was kind of like that figure that kind of changed that for him because he was like, at the end of the movie, he's like, do I want kids? All because of Miles. It went from, because like him not wanting kids is the reason why him and MJ in his universe got divorced. So this right here is um, him not wanting kids in the beginning to him wanting kids in the end is such great character development. And him helping Miles is just such, like, a cute little mentor thing. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, the, I already got said the voice cast was amazing. Uh, there's this little detail that I fucking love where Miles has animated every other frame to show, like, how inexperienced he is compared to the other Spider-Men. Uh, the different animation styles, uh, I, I love it. Uh, mostly with the three spider people who are introduced later, that being Penny, Spider-Man Noir, and Spider-Ham. Um, Penny Parker has, like, the manga anime style, like I said earlier. Spider-Man Noir has, like, the whole black and white thing going for him, like I said earlier. Uh, but a detail I forgot to mention was, uh, he's, he play, he's playing with a Rubik's Cube for a little while in the movie. And he's like, this color's purple. And they're like, no, because like in his universe, it is quite literally black and white. Um, and then you have Spider-Ham, which is just like, he drops anvils from the sky and stuff like that, kind of like a Looney Tunes character. Uh, the what's up danger scene where Miles is on the building and he's thinking back to like everything that's happened in the film. Uh, and like Peter B. Parker's voice is going through his head and... Uh, one of the quotes that Peter says to Miles is, uh, it's a leap of faith, uh, it's a leap of faith, Miles, it's all it is, meaning, like, when he knows he's ready to be Spider-Man, and he kind of, like, jumps head for, head first into, like, New York, and has, like, this whole swinging montage, um, I fucking love Spider-Ham, uh, he's just, like, <sighs> He was my favorite part of the movie. Um, especially because there's, like, this scene where Scorpion is like, are are you a silly cartoon? And Spider-Ham proceeds to beat the shit out of him and is like, did that feel like a cartoon to you? Um, there's another scene where, like, before he goes back to his universe, he says, that's all, folks. And Peter is like, is he allowed to say that? Like, legally? And I just, I... Loved Spider-Ham. He was the best part of the movie. Um, Miles filling in his role of Spider-Man by the end of the movie was also was also nice. Because in the beginning, like I said earlier, he was struggling to do it. But by the end, he's like diving headfirst into the city, starts swinging, beats the shit out of Kingpin, and just... Yeah, which brings me into the final fight with Kingpin, which I wanted to talk about. Um, these two kind of go together. Like I said, him filling in his role, and um, one of the thing King one of the thing Kingpin says to him is, uh, "The other Spider-Man couldn't beat me. So what makes you think you can beat me? You're nothing." And that sort of thing is like um, Kingpin is just like going in on him and like being like, "You're nothing," blah 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 blah. 
and uh you know miles has like about to like miles is it's getting his ass kicked to say the least and Miles has like his face on the ground and he looks over and his dad which is a police officer is there looking up at him and um he this is when he realizes like hey i i can do this so he gets up and uh, he puts his hand on Kingpin's shoulder and does the uh, the shoulder touch, which is what his uncle, uh, one of like the flirting techniques, his uncle showed him earlier on in the film. And he zaps Kingpin. And uh, that's kind of how he beats him. Uh, the Spider-Man 2099 post-credit uh, post credit scene was fucking amazing because my favorite comic book Spider-Man, besides Spider-Punk, is Miguel, which is Spider-Man 2099, and his little, like, post credit scene where he's pointing at uh, the 1960s cartoon Spider-Man, like, from the memes, was just... It was funny. Uh, which brings me to the last thing I absolutely loved, which was the Stan Lee cameo. And uh, it's like a whole scene where he... But he's telling Miles that him and Spider-Man were friends because he, Stan Lee owns like the uh, costume shop and um, Miles is like, can I bring it back if it doesn't fit? And Stan Lee was like, it always fits eventually. Um, which I'm like, that's a nice moment, but then it pans over to like a sign that says no refunds. But the message is just... The message was nice, because it was him basically being like, hey, you know, you'll fit into your role of Spider-Man one day. Uh, now, the things I dislike. Underused villains. There were so many villains that were I felt like were heavily underused. Like, the Prowler, underused, which I, I've been spoiling things this entire time, but Prowler dies, and I felt like he didn't get enough screen time. Uh, to actually show like him as a villain. Uh, Green Goblin was also there. Didn't get too much screen time. Scorpion. Tombstone. The only two villains that I feel like actually got a decent amount of screen time was Doc Ock and Kingpin. Uh, underused spider people. Spider-Ham, Penny Parker, Spider-Man Noir. All heavily underused because they were introduced towards, like, the climax of the film, so they really didn't have enough time to, like, shine in the spotlight. Um, I didn't like what they did with Genki. Uh, Genki barely did anything. Genki was just his roommate, and that was, that was that. Genki was just some guy for real. And then, I didn't like Peter B. Parker was such an asshole. But that's just me nitpicking at, like, his character, honestly. Um... But with all that being said, I give this uh, my rating of a 9.5. And I say you buy it and rewatch that movie over and over and over again because it is just that good of a movie. Like, if you haven't seen this movie yet, just please do yourself a favor and go and watch this movie because it is really just that good. And with that being said, guys, I'm going to go I'm going to go ahead and log off here um i appreciate each and every one of you i appreciate you guys for liking commenting subscribing that sort of thing um you guys have a wonderful night and i'll see you guys in the next content drop